Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 27th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And I'm curious, was there one bird that really got you interested in birds and birding? If so, leave a comment below and let us know what was your spark bird. For me, I think it was probably a Cooper's Hawk that I saw when I had just bought my first camera and I saw this beautiful Cooper's Hawk perched on the railing of my neighbor's porch. Kim and I started the morning out at the Braddock Bay South Marina. Here's a view looking to the east towards the sunrise, and there was a little bit of blue sky. But looking the other direction out across the bay, we had some rain clouds associated with the cold front, but we did have a beautiful rainbow, and you can never go wrong when you start the day with a nice rainbow. And there were two belted kingfishers perched in the marina, and they were the first ones I've actually seen for the season. I've heard a couple of rattle calls from them over the past couple days, but I hadn't actually laid eyes on one until today. And this one's a male, and we know that because it just has the blue breast band. It doesn't also have a brown breast band. We walked out the east spit, noticing that there were a lot of song sparrows around. And these two birds were the main highlight of the morning. Here we see two shorebirds, and we see legs sticking out past the tail and long, thin bills. And they dropped onto the mud flat. And here on the left, we see a kill deer. So we see that our birds are a little bit bigger. They flew around a little bit more. And here's a bit of a closer look. We see kind of a thin, straight bill. And we see long, trailing yellow legs. So maybe that's a hint. Here's a closer look at one wading in the water. This is a type of sandpiper. Again, notice that thin, straight bill and long, yellow legs. These were lesser yellow legs. And they were our first for the season, and I think they may even be the first for this area this year. Normally, greater yellow legs shows up first, but the ones today were lesser yellow legs, so we were surprised to see them. And we walked out onto the barrier island, and that's when it started to rain. Of course, when we were the farthest distance from the car, and uh, yeah, it was pretty gloomy and miserable and cold, but I decided to take a selfie to show how I was braving the elements. From the East Spit, we had a total of 43 species. And getting over to Braddock Bay Park, I was able to sit in the car for a few minutes while it rained and eat some breakfast. That rain cleared out and we were able to start the count at 10 a.m. In the morning, it was mostly cloudy, although there were some periods of sunshine. I had to put sunscreen on at one point, and that sunshine helped generate thermals to get some raptors moving. And then as the day went on, it was mostly cloudy or completely overcast. The wind started light from the southwest and then shifted around more westerly and even to northwest at one point and then shifted back around more towards the southwest in the final hours of the count. It felt fairly warm in the morning when the sunshine was out, but as it clouded over and the winds picked up and shifted, it felt quite chilly in the afternoon. Here we have a pair of ducks and if we look at the facial pattern of this one and also the long square tail. These are a pair of wood ducks with the male on the top and the female on the bottom. Here we see a bird that has brown patterning on the back and sides, but on the front we see a lot of yellow with some black here in the bib area. It has kind of a flat head that goes to a long pointed bill. This is an eastern meadowlark. And there were three eastern meadowlarks that landed in the trees together. Here we have a blue and white water bird with a rather thick bill. This is a belted kingfisher. Here we have a tan and gray bird with a long neck with a bit of a red cap on the head and a long pointed bill and long trailing legs. This is a sandhill crane and this gave us great views in the morning and even was giving its rattling call. Compare that to this bird, which is a little more grayish overall, maybe a little bit blue. We see a long yellow bill and we see that its neck is curved into an S shape. But again, we see long trailing legs. This is a great blue heron. Here we have a hawk that has somewhat broad wings and it has a medium length tail, so not long enough to be an excipiter. So this is a beautio. And we look at that underside streaking. It doesn't really have the belly band we would see on red tails. It's got streaking that starts all the way on the upper breast, not that just distinct belly band in the middle. We also do not see dark patagial bars, so not a red tail. If we look here towards the wingtips, we see translucent crescents on both wings here. And we see that the wingtip is made up of five feathers, one, two, three, four, five, giving it kind of a squared off or blunt shape. So this is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. And for comparison, here's the adult red-shouldered hawk. 
lot more distinctive with all that orange underneath black and white patterning to the wings again we can see that translucent crescent here near the wing tip although in this photo it doesn't stand out as much and again a medium length tail that's black with thin lines on it like the white lines on a blackboard here we have a group of dark birds migrating in a flock and we don't really see any color other than black so we're going to have to go off of the shape we see that these birds have long necks but they also have very long tails so these are double crested cormorants by comparison canada geese we would see some light on them and their tail would also be proportionally shorter it would have the long neck but kind of a shorter tail so cormorants look a little more evenly balanced here we have a well-proportioned hawk typical of the Budio genus taking a look we see dark patagial bars in the shoulder area and a dark belly band so we know that this is a red-tailed hawk and we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail so we know that this is an adult red-tailed hawk Here's a photo that's not great because the bird was pretty distant, but from the way that this bird was flying, from the speed of the flap and the way it turned, we knew it was on the larger end, and we see that it has very pointed wings. And overall, we get the impression it's kind of bluish and grayish. So this is a large falcon. In fact, it's the largest falcon that we regularly get, which is a peregrine falcon. Here we have a large dark raptor that has a lot of splotchy white on the underside of the wings and especially in this wing pit area. This is a young bald eagle. Here we have a small brown bird that has a little bit of black and yellow to the face. This is a horned lark and I saw some distant flocks of horned larks today. Not very many good looks but we are getting decent numbers of them migrating right now. Here we have another large dark raptor with extensive white throughout the underwings, especially in the wing pit area. So this is another young bald eagle. And in fact, we know this is a juvenile, so one that's coming up on one year old. We know that because of the dark head and dark underside of the body, a lot of white in the wing pit area. We have an even trailing edge to the wing because all of the feathers are the same age. And we see these pale inner primary feathers as well. So this is typical plumage for the juvenile bald eagle here's another good look at a sandhill crane that was soaring up above us and a couple times throughout the day we saw a sandhill crane so i don't know if it was all the same one or if it was a couple different individuals but we had some nice looks today and got to hear them calling as well here's a bird that a lot of people were waiting for today after having so many of them yesterday here we have a large dark raptor we see some white patches here in the wings and maybe some white to the base of the tail. We see a relatively small head and long tail. This is an immature golden eagle. And a lot of people came out in the morning and some people, in fact, one person who was really hoping to see a golden eagle had just left when this bird came over. So that was a little bit of a shame, but it ended up being a life bird for at least one visitor. So that was exciting. And this bird, uh, we picked it up way out in front in the distance and it ended up gliding almost directly overhead. So very satisfying looks at a golden eagle and here's an action shot of yours truly that Kim took while I was testing out the 15 power binoculars here we have a hawk that's overall pretty pale and if we look at the plumage we see that it does have dark patagial bars and a belly band so this is a red-tailed hawk but it does not have a dark trailing edge to the wings and does not have a red tail because this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk so one that was born last year they keep this plumage for their first year of life and the juvenile red tails often look a lot paler than the adults um, partly because they don't have that bold dark trailing edge to the wings and also a lot of times they'll have a translucent panel here on the inner primaries here we have a hawk with a long tail and long rounded wings so we should be thinking excipiter and we see some vertical teardrop streaking on the upper breast so we know it's a juvenile but is this a cooper's hawk or a sharp shinned hawk well if we look at the tail it looks like the outer tail feathers are a little bit shorter giving the tail a more rounded tip we see long wings that are held very straight now we see a small head but that's actually just because this bird was turning and wasn't completely perpendicular to us yet so just because of the angle the head looks small but as it continued to turn around the head did look like it stuck out more so this is a juvenile cooper's hawk you should be able to identify this one by now we see dark patagial bars and a dark belly band 
a dark trailing edge to the wings, and a red tail, making this an adult red-tailed hawk. Here we have a large dark raptor where the head has turned mostly white, still some splotchy white underneath, including in the wing pit area here. This is an immature bald eagle, and this looks like an older immature getting close to that adult plumage. Here we have a bird soaring high overhead, and from the way it flew, we knew that it was relatively large. And we see very pointed wingtips, so we should be thinking large falcon. We can also see some dark here on the face, so all of those field marks combine to make this a peregrine falcon. And I got a look in the spotting scope and could tell that it was an adult, so it had uh, some blue barring on the underside. Here's a bird in a glide posture. We see a two-toned underside with a lot of black here in the underwing and in the body, and a little bit lighter color to the trailing edge of the wings and the tail. We see a very small head. This is a turkey vulture. Here's a raptor with a dark body and wings and a white head and white tail. This is an adult bald eagle. Here's a hawk with kind of long skinny wings and a medium length tail. And just looking at the overall color impression, we see areas of dark and areas of light. So here on the underside of the body, we see a lot of dark. And we also see these dark squares in the carpal area. But we also see some areas of white, like on this section of the wing. But when we see this kind of dark and white plumage on a hawk, we should be thinking rough-legged hawk, which is exactly what this is. This is a light morph rough-legged hawk. And here's the same bird in a glide. And notice that rough-legged hawks can look very angular when they're in a glide. They push their wrists forward a lot and their wingtips get very pointed. Here we see a hawk with a long squared off tail and wings that are look a little bit pointed just because they're tucked back and we see a small head when it pushes the wrists forward like this the head is barely sticking out in front of the wings this is a sharp shinned hawk here's a large dark raptor with a big head and we see a lot of splotchy white throughout the under wings and the underside of the body this is another immature bald eagle and down on the bay in front of the boardwalk a nice collection of american coots and american widgeons had gathered so i took a photo here we have a small raptor. We see very pointed wings, so we should be thinking falcon. We see that it's very light underneath, so we should be thinking American kestrel. Also notice that facial pattern, and it's got just a little bit of spotting underneath, indicating that this is a male American kestrel. I hope I'm not sounding like a broken record when I keep saying this, but we have another large dark raptor with a large whitish head and some splotchy white throughout the underwings and body. This is another immature bald eagle. Okay, one more because I really want to drill this in. Anytime you're seeing a lot of splotchy white throughout the underside of the wings and body, it is an immature bald eagle. When we see immature golden eagles, if they have white underneath, it's always in very clean spots, one in the center of each wing and one at the base of the tail. Golden eagles never look real splotchy white underneath like this immature bald eagle does. Here's a hawk that almost fooled me as it went over. We see somewhat broad wings and a somewhat long tail. So I was getting ready to yell out goshawk until I took a closer look and saw those translucent crescents near the wingtips. So this is actually a juvenile red-shouldered hawk, a buteo, not an exhibitor. Here we have another bald eagle. We can see that white head and white tail, but notice this one isn't quite a full adult yet. Still has a little bit of dark to the head and to the tail, and we still see some white scattered throughout the underwing. So maybe one more year and this bird will look like a full adult. Here we have a hawk with that typical buteo shape, somewhat large bulky body and broad wings, only a medium length tail. And we look at the plumage, we see dark here in the patagio areas and a faint belly band. So this is a red tailed hawk. Here's a raptor with a long tail and long wings that are somewhat pointed. And we see black wingtips and a dark trailing edge to the secondaries. Overall white underneath otherwise with a grayish head. This is an adult male northern harrier. And the Canada geese are still making a mess in the grass. So if you visit, be careful where you step. A normal end time for the hawk watch would be around 5 p.m. But I was still seeing vultures so I stayed late. And even around 5.45 p.m., I was watching groups of turkey vultures like this, the last groups of the day that were migrating through and getting ready to put down for the evening.
Taking a look at the eBird checklist from the Hawkwatch today, we had 61 species. We had one new species for the season today, which was lesser yellow legs. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 1,774 turkey vultures, 17 bald eagles, 11 northern harriers. For exhibitors, we had 29 sharp shinned hawks and 7 cooper's hawks. For beauties, we had 31 red shouldered hawks, 87 red tailed hawks, and 1 rough legged hawk. We had 1 golden eagle. And for falcons, we had five American kestrels and two peregrine falcons for a total of 1,965 migrating raptors, which is the biggest total so far this season with that huge turkey vulture flight as we enter peak migration time for them. That brings the March total to 6,306 and the season total to 6,464. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for intervals of clouds and sun with a high in the mid 40s, winds west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it's not a great wind direction, but it's also not a terrible wind direction and having some periods of sun should generate thermals to get the birds up. So I would expect moderate migration. For Friday, we're looking at a windier day that's going to be sunny with few clouds, high in the mid 40s, but winds west northwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So once the winds get that strong, it can actually reduce the migration a bit, especially when it's that more unfavorable west-northwest direction. And overall, it just makes it more uncomfortable. You feel colder. You're getting blown around by the wind. Sometimes if the winds get too strong, we might stand behind the platform so that the platform can block the wind and just make it more comfortable for hawk watching. So we're not getting blown around so much, but would only expect light to moderate migration with those conditions. And for Saturday, it's looking partly cloudy with a high in the mid 40s and winds west northwest, but only at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So again, not looking like a spectacular day, but shouldn't be terrible either. We'll expect moderate migration. All right. Well, we were getting a little nervous this morning with that rain, thinking that maybe it wouldn't turn out to be so great of a hawk watching day. But we ended up having the biggest day of the season with all of those turkey vultures and we were able to squeak out one golden eagle and one rough-legged hawk. So a couple of nice highlights throughout the day and overall a fun day with a lot of visitors. And I hope you're able to join us soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.